prestigious very own Anton Suharo, the CEO of Touch 10. Please welcome to the stage. It's nice to see everybody here. Everybody here knows Angry Bird? Raise your hand. Okay, then we can all go home, right? <laughs> it's okay to play the game as well while, while we're here. I don't mind at all. Yeah. So yeah, I'm just gonna read up some stats first. Uh, so Peter Festerbacher, uh, not many people know, I mean, not many people remember that actually Rovio is a startup, right? Rovio was founded in 2003. Uh, the stats is that Angry Bird, within five years, has been downloaded for 2.5 billion times, with 10 of uh, 10 million active users daily, and is also the one of the fastest growing consumer brand. And uh, also, Rovio raised 42 million uh, from uh, the first time they raised with Asel Partners, Atomico, and Felicis Partner. So you know, let's start with something fun. Uh, what game do you play, Peter, right now, and why? I, I play a lot of games uh, because I kind of like it's part of the job. So I play, of course, all of our our games. So uh, lately, I've been playing like a lot of Angry Birds Transformers and Retry and and all of that. Uh, let's see. Then uh, of uh, kind of like other people's games. Uh, yeah, I've been playing some of the like the Supercell games uh, and uh, yeah. Uh, I, I tend to play uh, a lot of games uh, while I'm in the air, so I kind of just flew in here and uh, kind of afraid I have to leave tonight as well. So kind of like in in the air, you get to play a lot because there's not much else to do than to sleep. So so yeah, I play a lot of games. Oh, awesome! So okay, uh, tell me more about yourself and what you do at Rovio. Yeah, so uh, uh, I'm the mighty eagle at uh, Rovio, and. Uh, uh, of course, uh, all of you who play the game know that uh, Mighty Eagle is uh, kind of like the most powerful character in the game and uh, kind of like sweeps in, uh, clears uh, any level in, in one shot. And uh, it's a little bit what, what I do as well. So uh, uh, focus on making sure that we do big enough things fast enough at, uh, at Rovio and then also uh, stay true to our kind of like startup route. So, uh, of course, uh, uh, we're more than 800 people nowadays, but uh, we really want to make sure that we don't end up as just another of these corporations. So uh, again, very important to keep an environment where uh, we get stuff done and, and people are not afraid of doing doing new things. And I think that we've been doing uh, doing okay in that area if you look at Rovio. So so that's that's a little bit what I do. And then I work on like stuff around marketing and branding and these kind of things as well. So so a bit of everything. Okay. Okay, I'm sure we can we can read somewhere in the web and hear about it somewhere else. But can you tell us firsthand how Rovio was founded and can tell us more about the Rovio story? Yeah, so Rovio actually started as a student project. So uh, uh, in 2003, I was working at HP uh, Hewlett Packard. So I uh, kind of like have a big, bit of like experience working at a big corporation as well. And uh, then uh, I organized a competition. Uh, to make the best possible mobile multiplayer game. And this was in 2003, so that was when our friends at Nokia were still making phones. They had just come out with their uh, first smartphone. So uh, 2003, this was uh, way before the iPhone, Android, all of that. And then, uh, uh, yeah, so a competition to make games. Uh, Niklas and two of his friends, uh, founders of Rovio, they were students at uh, Aalto uh, University. Uh, so that's... Um, uh, yeah, one of the leading universities in Finland, and uh, then uh, they created a game as part of this competition called King of the Cabbage World, and you never heard about that because that never uh, came out uh, under that name. But anyway, uh, long uh, story short, they won the competition, and then uh, they came to me and said, okay, now what? And uh, then I told them that uh, I've always been a big believer in uh, you know, doing what you love, and it was very clear that Niklas and the guys loved making games, loved playing games. So I said, okay, why don't you start a company to make games? It's easy. And okay, they started Rovio, and then uh, uh, 51 games, six years later, 52nd game Angry Birds. So that, that's kind of like how Rovio got started. Wow, awesome. I mean, you know, okay, let's, let's, let's talk more about Rovio games, right? So uh, games, uh, Rovio, you know, the most uh, popular one that we all know is Angry Birds, right? So why the name Angry Birds? And you know, can you tell us the background story why you know it became the game? 
Yeah, so, so uh, actually Angry Birds uh, started uh, when uh, Jaakko Isalo uh, or Jaska, uh, short. Uh, so Jaska presented uh, this new game idea that featured uh, uh, the bird characters. And uh, okay, nobody else in the team kind of like understood the gameplay and the mechanics and all of that, but everybody immediately fell in love with the uh, characters and said, okay, we have to build a game around those birds. Uh, which we did, so uh, next eight months uh, in 2009, uh, Angry Birds was uh, born. And uh, I think what, what's important there is that it started with the character. So it didn't start with the game, the gameplay or anything like that, but it really started with the bird characters. And then during the eight month development, uh, uh, like the story was added. So okay, the green pigs, stealing eggs, Angry Birds. So like again, a uh, very short, very simple story. And uh, then things like the slingshot and all of that, uh, there are elements that were added very, actually late in the, in the development. But uh, yeah, Angry Birds uh, uh, as a brand, and, and of course if you look at Rovio today, uh, we're all about kind of two things, our fans and our brand. And uh, Angry Birds is one of these brands that begs for a question. So, you know, first time you hear, hear Angry Birds, uh, you know, you ask, that, okay, why? Why are the birds angry? And when you do that, we're stuck in your head forever. So, you know, like, that's like a good like, uh, uh, characteristic for any kind of like brand that you want to have a brand that uh, sticks in your head. And, and Angry Birds is one of these that, uh, yeah, makes you ask why. Is it true then that, you know, I heard somewhere, I read somewhere that the idea of the Angry Bird with a pig is that at that time there's a, a bird flu and a, a swine flu. Is that true? Yeah, I might have something to do with it. So that's uh, there's probably some reason why why the pigs are green. <laughs> but what's been cool with Angry Birds now that we have uh, over two and a half billion uh, downloads of the game, and and actually uh, because of that, the brand is uh, very very well known. Um, nine out of ten Americans know the brand. Ninety three percent of the Chinese population knows the brand. Pretty much everybody in Korea knows the brand. But also uh, as a side effect, now you know even small. Children know that green pigs steal eggs, birds get angry. So, uh, you know, it's become like a uh, fact, which is pretty cool. I see. So, you know, the success of Angry Birds, but you told us also that before that, uh, the two founders were making 50 over games, 51 games, if I'm not uh, mistaken. So what did they do differently from those 51-ish games that, that, that they did to Angry Birds and take it to the success that it is now? Yeah, so... so uh, I think that if you look back to 2003, uh, that was maybe not the right time to start a company to make mobile games. And, and uh, there's this kind of like golden rule of venture capital uh, that you know, goes something like this, that too early, too early, too late. Uh, so timing is really like super, super important. Uh, but yeah, anyway, uh, 2003, very different world from today. You know, no iPhone, uh, no App Store. And, and I think that that's really what kind of like changed uh, everything that uh, uh, before it used to be that you had to know the, like the big guys, you know, the handset makers, the operators, and it was actually very difficult to get distribution. Uh, the App Store changed that, obviously, so now anybody, you know, uh, uh, two guys and a dog, you know, uh, can, can kind of like bring out uh, a game and, and make it available to the world through the App Store. So uh, what really changed, uh, even more than like Rovio, you know, and the company itself was the world around us. And uh, then uh, uh, I would say that we made uh, some very good games before Angry Birds. I mean, we made, uh, uh, and we did a lot of work for hire. We made uh, Need for Speed, Burnout Mobile for EA. We did uh, Collapse for, uh, for uh, Game House. We created a series of games called Bounce for Nokia, and they were like pre-installed on, I don't know, 200 million plus uh, Nokia devices. But again, work for hire, those of you who are kind of like in that business, it's not too much fun. Uh, you kind of like have really typically struggle to make ends meet. So uh, kind of like decided to change the strategy and, and kind of like really uh, build our own IP, build our own games. And that's, that's kind of like the big change with Angry Birds. And then uh, the strategy was really to build games until we have a hit uh, on the iPhone and then kind of like take it everywhere. And, and then uh, we're kind of like... Uh, fortunate enough to then have Angry Birds be a big hit and then we've been able to take that to all the other platforms, all the other screens and uh, then of course uh, uh, we have a big consumer products business nowadays. So if you look at our, our business last year, 
47% was actually in physical consumer products, our, our licensing business. So um, Rovio today is, is not a games company, but really a company that is active in all, all areas of entertainment. So games, animation, pr uh, consumer products, parks, you name it. Right, so I'm, I'm really interested because I'm a game developer myself and whenever I, l I try to launch a game, I always be there when the launch date and you know, you know, it's just like watching your kid grows, right? Can you describe, I, I'm sure you were there, and can you describe the situation or the, the you know, the, 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 the situation there when you guys know that, oh, Angry Birds made the first one million dollar, you know, when Angry Birds made the first one million downloads or something like that, can you mm -hmm. tell us the situation with the guys? Yeah, and, and I, I think that, um, uh, of course, you always try to make hit games. So I mean, that's that's kind of like obvious. But I, I think with Angry Birds, we try to be very, very analytical about it. Try to eliminate luck every step at the process. Uh, so that that was kind of like one thing that was a bit different uh, with Angry Birds. And I think that also uh, the fact that we started with the characters. Uh, so that that kind of like you know kind of like just happened like that. Uh, but I think that th there's uh, a lot to be, be kind of like uh, learned and had there that, uh, you know, strong characters. I mean, there are lots of examples of, of strong character businesses. Hello Kitty has been around for 40 years and, uh, and so on. But, but I, I think that if you look at Angry Birds, when we first knew that we were onto something was uh, when during development, the developers were playing the game a lot. So that's always kind of like good uh, if you kind of like play the game uh, uh, yourself and, uh, and I think that that's always what we try to do at Rovio. We're not big believers in kind of like various focus groups and things like that. So we try to build games that we love um, playing ourselves. Mm. But then uh, the biggest uh, kind of like sign of uh, like success was when uh, Niklas took uh, the game uh, uh, home for Christmas who went to see his parents and then uh, you know, as we always do, you know, like you show the game to, to uh, your mom and okay, look at what we did. And then uh, typically what happened with the 51 other games is that he got the phone back, you know, and okay, yeah, very nice. But then with uh, Angry Birds, actually, uh, his mom uh, hold, uh, held on to the phone all Christmas because she was playing Angry Birds. So we, we kind of like knew that, okay, hey, this, this must be big because, you know, at, at the time, um, you know, typical mom not playing games, so uh, so we kind of like knew. But yeah, then uh, then uh, okay, first million and first uh, you know uh, uh, million downloads and all that. Actually, still have flyers somewhere at the office where we're kind of like saying that okay, Angry Birds 500,000 downloads, and you know like it's so uh, mm. uh, yeah. I mean, of, of course, then after a while, when you kind of like okay, million. 50 million, then you kind of like, uh, right. you hit uh, bigger and bigger numbers and, and okay, now we're at 2.5 billion, which is like a crazy number, but you, you get, you kind of like get used to it. So, so I think that it's, uh, and actually it's, it's very good because now the team is kind of like used to that, okay, we do a new game and of course it gets 100 million downloads and uh, it doesn't feel like a lot, but when you stop and think about it, 100 million of course is like a massive number. And I, I think that I don't remember you know, like celebrating 10 million, 30 million, whatever. But I, I remember very well when we celebrated 100 million because that was million. kind of like a goal that we set early on and everybody told us that, hey, you guys are crazy. I mean, it's impossible. Nobody can have 100 million downloads. Only Tetris has had, you know, 100 million copies distributed and it took them right. more than 20 years. Man, awesome. Very inspiration. So from what I, I get, the tips for you, if you are developers out there, is that, uh, you know, if you play your game uh, and like it, uh, then that you are into something, and always hire your mom as a QA, right? Yeah, I think <laughs> that, uh, I mean, I, I really think that, uh, uh, of course, depends on what kind of games you're making, but uh, we're making games for everybody. We're making casual, very casual games, very approachable games. And, uh, of course, then uh, you should test it on, on people, uh, uh, and I mean, ideally, who don't play games. I, what has happened with Angry Birds is that we've kind of like expanded the market uh, for uh, uh, people who play games. I, I think that, uh, you know, like every day I have people walking up to me telling me that, okay, I never play games, but I play Angry Birds. Or my wife never plays games, right. but plays Angry Birds. And I, I think that uh, one, one thing that just to kind of like test if your game, uh, game has legs, I, I think that, you know, why not test it on... on non-gamers and also uh, if you look at Angry Birds and I'm sure you all have examples of you know uh, uh, your kid or like uh, relatives kids uh, two-year-olds that play Angry Birds and I, I think that that's a good uh, 
uh, test for any game that uh, can a two-year-old pick up, you know, your iPhone, iPad, and start playing the game. And uh, and if not, why not? Shouldn't you build your game uh, in such a way that? It, and, and and again, talking about like super casual games here that. Uh, make them in such a way that a two-year-old can play them. If, with Angry Birds, we uh, tried to eliminate all text, make it very, very visual. And at the time in 2009, uh, it wasn't that typical. And uh, if you look at games today, uh, a lot of them have similar UI to, to uh, what we have in Angry Birds, but that wasn't at all the norm at the time. So I think that that's something that I would also say is, the, you know, test on... Uh, on uh, like really young kids and uh, and non gamers, so that that's uh, something that um, you know you can get some indication there if if you're onto something. Okay, let's talk about uh, Angry Birds Transformer, your kind of your latest game, right? Anybody here downloaded and played Angry Bird Transformers? Okay, a couple of you, good. Yeah, now would be a good time to kind of like remedy that <laughs> if you haven't. But it's it's a totally different Angry Birds game and different experience. Uh, so I think that team actually did. Uh, a very good job with uh, with that one, but yeah, you should check it out. Right. So uh, I have a question that that came from a game developer, uh, my friends, and they asked me, you know, first thing is, you know, how did the col collaboration happen? Did you contacted Hasbro or Hasbro contact you? That's one. Second thing is, you know, the gameplay, like you said, is really unique. It's it's different from what the you know Angry Birds that we know. Did you come up with the gameplay first and then contacted Hasbro, or or was it the other way around? You know. Uh, the other way around, but yeah, I mean, actually, our, our collaboration with Hasbro actually started not with Transformers, but with uh, Angry Birds Star Wars, and okay. uh, uh, and Star Wars, Angry Birds Star Wars, we actually did uh, because we wanted to. So uh, we're kind of like thinking that okay, we had done Angry Birds Space, that was like super successful, and then uh, okay, what could be like bigger, and what would be the biggest brand collaboration, biggest like mashup that we could do. And, uh, and then uh, Star Wars very quickly came up. And then, of course, at Rovio, uh, like in many companies, there are a lot of Star Wars fans. So uh, again, uh, you know, back to my point about doing stuff that you love. So uh, we have a lot of people who love, you know, love Star Wars. And uh, then uh, turned out that on the same, uh, the same thing on, on the Lucas side, that we went to meet with them uh, at their offices in San Francisco. And, and then uh, a lot of Angry Birds fans uh, on, on kind of like the Star Wars side as well, so it was actually very easy to to pull the collaboration together, uh, and that's also where our Hasbro uh, collaboration started because Hasbro uh, has the exclusive rights to make like the Star Wars uh, toys and and uh, all of that. So we then uh, uh, made that happen. So when we launched Angry Birds Star Wars, we launched the game, we launched the toys, we launched everything at the same time. Uh, 8th of uh, November, so I remember that we kind of we took over the Times Square in New York and, and did some cool stuff around that. But anyway, so then uh, Transformers actually uh, came out of uh, that collaboration. So uh, Hasbro obviously owns the Transformers brand, and uh, and what what we what we wanted to do there. I mean, now if you play the game and. Uh, you should uh, and when you actually when you download Angry Birds Transformers and you first. Uh, start the game. It starts with this uh, animation that kind of like brings you back to the original yeah. Transformer series, you know, uh, in the 80s. So it's it's kind of like this uh, uh, massive like nostalgia trip when you kind of like start that. And and we have gotten a lot of uh, amazing feedback on on that uh, particular animation. So what we wanted to do was uh, not kind of like okay, do a game around the movies, but really. Uh, go back to kind of like the roots of of uh, Transformers and and create that kind of uh, experience and and then uh, then we actually built the game uh, with that starting point and and the whole experience we created the animation. There's uh, also uh, a series of uh, Angry Birds Transformers uh, comic albums that uh, are coming out. I think the first one just hit uh, hit the market in the US. So, so uh, again, we want to build not just the game, but the full experience with uh, games, toys, uh, animations, comic books. So uh, really building the whole world, the whole story of uh, Angry Birds Transformers. And uh, yeah, it's been uh, very well uh, received. And, and yeah, as, as you said, uh, the gameplay is totally different from kind of like other Angry Birds titles.
Yeah, I mean, you guys did a great job with the nostalgic feel because I, I have friends who hated the Michael Bay versions, but really love the Angry Bird version because it brings out the you know the 1980s, I think. Yeah, yeah. that was really the idea to kind of like go back to the kind of like origins, the roots of of Transformers, and then then do a mashup around that. And I think that uh, uh, again, uh, what you can really see in Angry Bird Star Wars, in Angry Bird Transformers, that. Um, their games, their worlds made by fans. So it, it's really, uh, you know, again taking Star Wars, you can you can tell that uh, the team who worked on on kind of like our Star Wars games, they watched their Star Wars movies, uh, let's say more than once. <laughs> so so uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, attention to detail and a lot of things that uh, you wouldn't notice if you if you're not like a fan. So there there's a lot of a lot of that in, in both uh, Star Wars and Transformers, so uh, really uh, this kind of like uh, massive, massive uh, attention to detail. Awesome, awesome. So we are now in Indonesia, right? So uh, can you tell us some stats? Uh, how big is Indonesia f for Rovio? Yeah, so Indonesia, of course, uh, is very big. Uh, I, I actually, I don't have um, like any numbers to, to share, but uh, it is a very big market for us and, and uh, okay if you look at kind of like our total uh, 2.5 billion downloads uh, of course it means that we have uh, a pretty big uh, presence here in Indonesia uh, as well and uh, I don't have the stats on, on kind of like the brand uh, awareness uh, like uh, like uh, what we have in the US or, or China but uh, kind of like my, my gut feeling that we're kind of like doing pretty well so uh, a lot of people know the brand here, here as well, and uh, I think also uh, um, what we always like to do, and, and we haven't done kind of like too much here yet, but we always try to add like local flavor uh, to our tiles. So we've done a lot of uh, uh, interesting things like uh, around the Chinese, like the Moon Festival, Chinese New Year, and uh, I think that uh, uh, we could do more more here in, in Indonesia as well, so, so that's uh, something that uh, we, we should do, I think. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, you know, uh, somebody reminded me yesterday that uh, he's a guy from Intel, uh, and he told me that he's, you spoke to him a few years ago. You have Angry Bird Rio, right? Why don't you have Angry Bird Bali? And yeah, when, I mean, when we, you have we could definitely do like something like that, and, and uh, I think that there's a lot of uh, uh, interesting birds and interesting kind of like uh, habitats and things. Uh, so yeah. there's more to Indonesia than Bali, obviously. Sure. Uh, so so I think that uh, we could uh, we could definitely do do something there. And then I, I think also uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of talent here, obviously. So uh, again, uh, uh, we have uh, right now at Rovio we have I think uh, 40 some nationalities uh, working at Rovio. Uh, I don't think that we have any anybody from Indonesia yet so that's again uh, you know ah. if you're looking for for a cool job uh, you know talk to, talk to us uh, but I, I, I think that that's also one thing that we want to make sure that we have uh, uh, good like uh, diversity good set of, kind of like, different backgrounds because that's again very very important when you want to create kind of like, the best games the best entertainment on the planet so so again uh, uh, yeah, would love to do more uh, here and, and more with, uh, with the talent, with the people here. Yeah. My Indonesian friend, Rovio is hiring, so you can talk to him later. Okay, talking about your company, company culture is something that I also uh, want to learn. And, and as a young company, it's really important to have your company structure uh, from day one, or even day zero. Uh, first thing is, you know, can you tell us uh, some similarities or differences of the game scene or game startup in the Nordic, uh, where you came from, and probably you know in in Asia that you have seen a little bit. Uh, yeah, I think that it's it's probably uh, not that different. I think that uh, kind of like the gaming uh, scene and and kind of like gaming ecosystem, it's not uh, massively different. I mean, of course, you have. Uh, uh, differences if you look at kind of like again uh, Finland or like Nordic Nordic scene and you compare to kind of like Japan US here, but uh, I think that there's probably more uh, commonality than than kind of like differences. Uh, then uh, okay, not an expert on on uh, kind of like the gaming scene here. I know obviously a few few of the companies active here in Asia, but uh, can't claim to be any kind of expert. Uh, but then if I look at kind of like Finland and Nordics, we have uh, 
uh, a long uh, uh, Kalak history and long uh, like track record of making uh, pretty successful games. So already Kalak going back to the console times with uh, Remedy making Kalak Max Payne and and uh, uh, and so on. And uh, then uh, of course uh, the most recent success stories out of Finland. So uh, Rovio and Angry Birds being one. Uh, then uh, Supercell obviously uh, with the, with their uh, uh, their success and then kind of like the Gang Ho SoftBank investment of like 1.5 billion uh, last year. So, uh, so there's been uh, quite a few uh, success stories, and I think that's very important that uh, uh, you have role models. So, uh, if you look at now, uh, I was actually at uh, Slush, so that's like the biggest and best startup conference in uh, in kind of like, uh, where I would say on the planet, but at least like in Eurasia. Uh, so we had like 14,000 people uh, in Helsinki last week wow. and uh, a lot of games companies. And what I think is very interesting that, okay, we started Slush in 2008 with 300 people and uh, now uh, it's grown uh, in, in just like uh, seven years into more than 14,000 and a lot of game companies. And if you ask the game companies there, you know, what they want to do, is that they want to be the next Rovio, they want to be the next Supercell. So there's a lot of uh, hmm. uh, very positive development because people now look at, you know, kind of like what we've done, what the other guys have done, that, okay, if these guys can do it, so can we. And I think that that's probably one thing that uh, uh, would be great to get uh, here in, in Indonesia as well, is that you need uh, one or two like massive success stories and then that will really help grow uh, the ecosystem because then of course everybody wants to do the same and now we have uh, hundreds of uh, new kind of game startups in, in Helsinki alone that uh, they all want to be the next Rovio, the next Supercell. Hmm, inspiring. Uh, very quickly Peter because we are running out of time and I have lots of questions to ask you but uh, you know uh, how is, can you describe how is it working in Rovio and what's the company culture that you can share with us? Uh, I, I think that uh, like any company, I mean, it's it's not uh, it's not perfect, and I, I would say that it's uh, definitely kind of like work in progress all the time. Uh, the environment that we try to create is really one where uh, uh, people can do new things and and uh, basically shouldn't be afraid of kind of like uh, uh, trying new things, not not afraid to to kind of like fail, and and uh, that's something that's very very important then one thing that i always uh, emphasize myself is that we we should always think about how we can do things differently uh, so that that's something that is uh, super super important you always want to make sure that you figure out like how can you stand out from from the crowd i mean it's very crowded market out there if you talk about games animation like any any area so uh, you really want to uh, encourage people to uh, do things differently and, and not being afraid of, uh, as I said, doing new things and not being afraid of, of, uh, of failing. Uh, and I think also then uh, you need to have uh, kind of like the courage to go go get stuff done. And uh, and okay, now we're more than uh, 800 people, so uh, I think that uh, there's always kind of like the daily challenges of making sure that you kind of like don't turn into uh, this kind of like massive uh, bureaucracy and, and more like corporation type of uh, animal. So I think that it's, it's very, very important to keep, keep that in mind. And we're actually, in fact, we are, are trying to simplify our organization, uh, you know, as we speak. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so I think that that's something that is always, uh, you, you really have to work very, very hard to kind of stay true to your uh, startup roots. And, and I think that the, the Apple guys, uh, you know, put that very well that they, they kind of like look at themselves as the biggest startup on the planet. And I think that right. there is kind of like no excuse uh, to kind of like do otherwise, that you should always uh, uh, try to keep that spirit and, and this kind of like entrepreneurial uh, approach to everything. And, and I think that at Rovio, we always, uh, uh, we haven't been afraid to go into, into new areas and, and uh, the organization kind of needs to support that. That's uh, that's super important. And uh, yeah, I think that best thing that you can do is is kind of like keep out of the way and and let people do their jobs. Right. So last two questions. One is we are in Startup Asia, and I know that you are very passionate about startup. That's why you started Slush. Uh, any advice? Three top advice that you can give to fellow uh, startup owners here uh, in Indonesia and and people here. 
three three top. Yeah, so I, I think that uh, uh, yeah, three. Hmm. Okay, that's a lot. Yeah, if not, uh, it's, it's I, only one but, maybe. But I, I think that uh, one, one thing, of course, that is very important is 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 uh, you really need to kind of like uh, be passionate about what you do, believe in what you're doing, and and I think like if you look at the Rovio story, uh, 51 games and then Angry Birds. So uh, I, I think that uh, kind of like the first thing there is that it's it's always. Uh, good to keep in mind that there are very few overnight success stories. So like with Angry Birds, it's not like we, you know, a couple of guys made a game and then, you know, like two and a half billion downloads. So, so I think that, uh, again, it, it typically requires a bit more than, uh, than that. Uh, and then, uh, so that, that kind of probably would be the, uh, the first one. Then uh, I think also one thing that is very important is, is uh, again, uh, you know, really think about you, you, you and your startup. How can you um, stand out from the crowd? You know, uh, what's different about what you're doing? And and here, different many times, you know, automatically means better. So it's so kind of like again thinking about that is is uh, very important because there are you know for every Angry Birds there are hundreds of thousands of not so Angry Birds, not so successful games. Even though those games can be very very good, but if nobody knows about them, you know. Who cares? So uh, really think about how you can stand out, and then uh, you know along you know that um, uh, train of thought. I would also say that if you're serious about making games, uh, you need to be serious about marketing and branding. So I think that, uh, uh, and that's of course not only in the games market. In anything you do, that uh, you know make great products, but you should also do great marketing because if nobody knows about your game or or product, uh, then it doesn't really matter. So, so that would be kind of like a set of advice. And I'll be around, you know, uh, here the rest of the day. So, you know, if you want to talk to me, come grab me. I'm pretty easy to find in my red hoodie. So, you know, feel free. Yep. Just last question to 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 close this panel. I think is what's next for Rovio? Can you share us your uh, something that you can share with us? What's next? Uh, yeah, more, <laughs> but uh, 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 bigger and better uh, always. But I think uh, one one uh, kind of like big thing that uh, we're working on the first movie is coming in uh, in 2016, so so that's going to be uh, be pretty cool. But then uh, before that, we're making uh, many new games, many new uh, kind of like animations, uh, many new products. So there there's uh, there's a lot cooking, and and uh, you'll see some of the la let's say the the new games in 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 the next few weeks. So so uh, not too far off. Peter, thank you so much for being here. Ladies and gentlemen, Peter the Mighty Eagle. Give a hand, please. Thank you.